Good evening, good evening, guys, or good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. How you doing? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Nora. Great to see you. Um, and Drea, good evening. Uh, Jorge, hello. Hi, Juanjo. Good evening, yes. teacher. Hi. Oh my God, I didn't connect my earphone. Give me a second. A lady, good evening. Salvador, how you doing? How are you guys? Mauricio, how you Hi. doing? Everything all right? Ready. Is everything okay? Are you having a good day? Okay. All okay. Okay, Abigail, thank you. Be careful. I hope you get home safe and sound. Okay, so really nice, guys. Me alegra mucho verlos. Uh, thank you so much for joining on this Tuesday. And uh, it's always nice to have you around. And uh, give me just a moment. Give me just a moment. Okay, we're going to like get started, guys, working with a couple of things. So, uh, Guys, iniciamos eh, el día de ahora, la unidad número cuatro, que es nuestra última unidad. And, uh, vamos igual, ir intentando, eh, vamos a ir intentando eh, darle o ir, eh, ir regresando también, revisando un par de cosas, right? Uh, for example, Hemos estado revisando el presente perfecto, so vamos siempre a intentar eh, revisarlo, la like, little by little, ir, eh, you know, reciclando un par de temas como el pasado, la pronunciación de pasado, que también tenemos pendiente, right? And of course, um, remember guys, que es un proceso, so si se nos olvida, it's totally fine. Entonces más adelante lo vamos a volver a practicar, right? So the idea is that you get an, um, like, uh, a general, you know, understanding de cómo utilizar los tiempos gramaticales y sobre todo, like, eh, pronunciation lo vamos a ir eh, mejorando en el camino, right? We're going to get improvement on the way. So, to get started today, guys, eh, vamos a hablar un poquito de recomendaciones. We're going to talk about recommendations. Vamos a revisar... Eh, uh, should, un poquito de should, como dar indicaciones, recomendaciones, or advice to use in should. But to get started, I have just a little something for you. So, vamos a revisar un par de cositas, right? And we're going to have like a little trivia here. So, guys, eh, no sé si son muy buenos, or I am really hoping that you're really good with trivias. And uh, so, tengo un par de preguntas for you. I just got a couple of general questions uh, for you. Give me one second. And uh, pretty much, I'm just going to give you like a question and you guys no se ayudan con la respuesta, right? You just help us with the answer uh, for that question. Give me just a moment. I'm trying to locate my trivia. I don't know what it is. Eh, so, hay un par de preguntas sobre naturaleza, you know, like famous eh, people, experiment, presidents, and the like. Okay. Got it already. Okay, guys, so are you kind of ready? Some buenos con trivias, guys. Are you good with trivias? A little, so so. Let's see if you are able to get a couple of answers. Mr. Sanchez, good evening. Great to see you. Um, Ezequiel, good evening. So, oh, okay. What is a trivia? A trivia is algo bien sencillo, guys. A trivia is solamente like, um, si alguna vez vieron quien quiere ser millonario, so you have a question, right? 
Y si ustedes saben la respuesta, so you give it up, right? Um, so, en quien quiere ser millonario, normally les daban como dos, tres respuestas. Y ustedes tenían que adivinar what was the answer. Here, solamente I'll give you the question. Y ustedes, you know, um, si lo saben, you just say the answer. Pretty much. That's it. That is the idea of a trivia. Give me un segundo, because trying to get that work. But I don't know what's going on. So give me just a second. Okay. I got it. All right, guys. So just help us with the answer. Si la saben. So give us the, ans the answer out loud, right? And pretty much that's it. So let's get started with the first question, guys. Uh, okay, I have only 15 questions. So están bastante fáciles. They are kind of easy. Okay, so let's get started with the first. Si saben la respuesta, if you know the answer. Give us the answer away, right? Just say it out loud. Okay, guys, question number one. Uh, si le voy a dar la las tres opciones. So I'm going to give you the three options. What is the coldest place on earth? Again, what is the coldest place on earth? A, the Arctic. B, the Antarctic. C, Siberia. Letter C, B. What is the coldest place on earth? We should be. Deberíamos de apostar, guys. So the Arctic, the Antarctic, or Siberia? Antarctic. Antarctic. Okay, guys, what about the rest? Siberia. Siberia? Okay. Arctic, the Antarctic, or Siberia? So I got Mr. Sanchez, I'll uh, say letter C. I got Ezequiel with B. Guys, and the rest? No hay como unfortunately. <laughs> so we don't know, we don't have here like call the public, internet, or anything. But the correct answer is letter B, the Antarctic. So that is considered the coldest place on earth. Incredible. All right, next one, guys. Number two. Um, okay, what is the most crowded? Guys, what is the meaning of crowded? ¿Te recuerdan? Do you remember? Like, poblado. Poblado, very good. What is the most crowded country in the world? A, Monaco. B, Singapore. C, Bangladesh. What is the most crowded country in the world? Bangladesh. Again, uh, Monaco, Singapore, Bangladesh. Singapore. Singapore, teacher. Singapore. Singapore. And the answer is. Da -da -da -da. No, that's Monaco. Unbelievable, but that's Monaco. All right. We have to investigate more about the country. Okay, next one. Number four, uh, number three, sorry. Um, what is the largest, this is very easy. What is the largest ocean in the world? A, the Pacific, B, the Atlantic, C, the Indian Sea, the Indian Ocean, sorry. The Pacific, the Atlantic, or the in Indian? What is the largest ocean in the world? Letter A. Pacific. Pacific. Pacific? Atlantic. Yeah. Mm, I gave you the answer before. <laughs> Actually, that's Pacific. Pacific is considered the largest um, ocean, right? Like from the five oceans. That's Pacific. Okay, next one. Um, what is the heaviest, like heavy, right? What's the heaviest animal on earth? Uh, the rhino? Hippopotamus or elephant? The heaviest animal on earth. Elephant. Rhino, hippopotamus or elephant? Elephant. Elephant. 
Let her see elephant. Okay, that is her see. Rhino, hippopotamus, or elephant? Elephant? Do you all agree? And the answer is yes, that's correct. That's the elephant. So that's considered the heaviest animal on earth. All right, next one. Um, okay. The mosquito kills more people than any other animal in Africa. So the mosquito kills more people than any other animal in Africa. What is the second most dangerous African animal? Letter A, lion. Letter B, crocodile. Letter C, hippopotamus. Let me read it again. The mosquito kills more people than any other animal in Africa. What is the second most dangerous African animal? Lion, A, crocodile, B, C, hippopotamus. C, hippopotamus. Hippopotamus, okay. Yes. Guys, do you agree? Um, hippopotamus, lion, be. crocodile? Or hippopotamus? Letters B, Lion, crocodile. Crocodile? Reptile. Uh -huh. Okay, guys, what about the rest? Lion, crocodile, or hippopotamus? Lion. Crocodile. Lion? Okay. I think crocodile. Okay. And the answer is -da 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 -da, hippopotamus. That is considered the second most dangerous animal in Africa. Wow, okay. Next one. Um, okay, which country, which country has the most visitors each year? Like which country has more visitors, more people, more tourists every year? Letter A, Italy. Letter B, France. Letter C, China. Let me read it again. Which country? has the most visitors each year. A, Italy, B, France, C, China. Letter A, Italy. Italy. Italy, all right. Italy, France, or China, guys? Italy. Italy? Okay, I got two for Italy. What about the rest? Like the one that has more tourists, right? More visitors. Italy, France, or China? Interesting that, it, like you say Italy, okay. And the answer is da, 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 France. France is the country with the most visitors every year. That's amazing. That would be France. Okay, let me go. <laughs> okay, let me go for next. Um, um, mm, oh my god. Okay. I don't know. This is going to be really hard, I believe. How heavy uh, guys, algunos alguna vez have you ever seen the program Kilos Letales? No, nobody has seen no. it. No, teacher. Guys, nobody has seen Home and Health. Like El Canal Home and Health, Kilos Letales, no? No. no? no. Okay, so this question is kind of related. It says, how heavy was the heaviest ever person? Como la persona más pesada, right? How heavy was the heaviest ever person? Letter A, 335 kilograms. Uh, we're talking about uh, almost 700 pounds. Letter B, 635 kilograms. Or letter C, 935 kilograms. Oh my God, that's a lot. Okay. Letter B. How Letters. heavy was the Letter heaviest B, yes. person? Like 300 kilograms, around 300, around 600, or around 900? Letter B? 
Letter B. Letter B, Letter 600, B. 600. Imagine 600 kilograms. How many pounds is that? 1,200 pounds. No, right? No, 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 more. No, yeah, probably that. Guys, King is good in mathematics. <laughs> Who is good at math? I mean, 600 pounds, I mean, 600 kilograms. And every kilo is 2.2 pounds, right? So, oh my God, una persona de una tonelada, like one, um, okay, that's amazing. But yeah, you're correct. The answer is 635 kilograms. So that's a lot, that's a lot, okay. Mm, next one, guys. Um, what is the first country to give women the right to vote? Un poquito de historia, que no le gusta historia. So what was the first country to give women the right to vote? A, Australia. B, New Zealand. C, Saudi Arabia. Again, what is the first country to give women the right to vote? Como de emitir el voto, right? The, the right to vote. Australia, New Zealand, or Saudi Arabia? Letter A, Australia. A, letter A, Australia. Okay, guys, anybody else? Alguien quiere intentarlo? So Australia, do you agree that it was Australia or New Zealand or so Saudi Arabia? No idea? No idea. Pueden usar su comodín, guys. Pregunte en su casa. <laughs> so you can ask your family. What was the first country to give women the right to vote? No tengo saldo, teacher. No, I mean, quien está en su casa, probably they know. Australia, New Zealand, or Saudi Arabia? The answer is... New Zealand, so unbelievable, but New Zealand was the country. Okay, and my last question, guys, a second. Okay, this is the last. What is, oh, okay. What is the highest mountain in the world? What's the highest mountain in the world? Mount Everest? Chomolungma o Sagarmata? Everett. Mount Everest, Chomolungma or Sagarmata? Sagarmata. I think it's pronounced. Everest. 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 Mount Everest. Okay. Um, actually, oh, this is kind of tricky. De hecho, es el mismo. <laughs> it says the Mount Everest. Is el nombre? Oh, that's the general name. Chomolungma is the Tibetan name. Right. And Sagarmatha is the Nepalese name. Oh, that was so tricky. So it's la misma. Okay, guys, then we finished with the trivia. So how did how did it go? Como les fue? Kind of. Más o menos, kind of close. More or less. <laughs> So, so not bad, right? But nice, nice. I think we definitely, we are on the way to get ready for it. Who wants to be millionaire? <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. Well, um, we're going to like go ahead and check today part of the topic that we have. And vamos a dar inicio a esta parte que es giving advice utilizando should. Uh, that is kind of easy, I have to say. It's not like a big, big deal here. I am pretty sure that you will not have a major issues here. So um, this is unit number four. This is page number 39. And it says, tell me about policies in my workplace. So hemos discutido este tema before about policies, un par de cosas que podemos, que no podemos hacer at work. Así que vamos a movernos a little bit. We're going to like just 
go ahead for a second and work with the conversation that we have right here. It says companies, procedures, and policies. Um, and we have some expressions que definitivamente vamos a necesitar for this unit. So, algunas de ellas son la expresión que tenemos acá, que es employees. We have policies, right? Mm, we have notify or notify. We have, what was the other one? I lost it. Mm, that's the one we got. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, and we have the word receive. So, uh, guys, utilizamos should pretty much para dar recomendaciones. Previously, durante, durante este módulo, hemos revisado un poquito de would, hemos revisado un poquito de be allowed to, right? Un poquito let me or let. Y tenemos acá eh, should, que es una recomendación bien suave. So, just, I'm giving you some recommendations. No es algo pesado, no es algo fuerte, no es una obligación. Solamente algo que yo considero that I think that it's my opinion que ustedes deberían de hacer. So take a look at this conversation. Eh, tenemos esta palabra que la pronunciamos como should y la negación que es shouldn't, right? Uh, guys, solamente repitan conmigo las que están en azul, please. Repeat with me. If you can open your mic or si prefieren hacerlo desde su casa, no hay problema. Uh, with the mic off. So la primera que tenemos es policies. 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 Employees. 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 Receive. Receive. Notify. Notify. Voy a agregar esto de acá, que es run. Run. Uh, olvídense de la, de la W, no la pronuncio, solo run. Run. Perfect. That's the word. La W no la pronunciamos. Exactly. Guys, what is the meaning of policies? What is a policy? Policy. Política. Una política, exactly. So, usamos policy para hablar de políticas Política. de la empresa or eh, reglamentos, right? Kind of rules, kind of policies. Eh, employees, que creo que nosotros ya sabemos, we are employees, right? Of another, of something. What is the meaning of receive? Recibir. Recibir algo, like get, right? So, you receive a warning, I got a warning, I receive. Notify, I think we got it. What do you, do you notify people? Notificar. Notificar. Mm -hmm. Notificar, mandar un reporte, so alguna forma de hacer llegar información. So we use notify for that. All right, very nice. Uh, can I please have two volunteers? Can I ayuda a leer, guys? Who wants to read? Me, teacher. Perfect, so thank you, Hector. And Georgina, perfect. So, Hector, ayúdenme con Bruno, please, que creo que es el primero. En Georgina, ayúdenme con el segundo, que es Max. Le pueden cambiar nombres. You can change names. That is no, that is totally fine. Okay. Hey, Georgina, look, I want to know what policies you have in your company. Uh, Georgina, are you with us? Uh, creo, Georgina, que el audio lo tiene activado, pero por alguna razón, we can't hear you. Uh, sí, um, ahora sí. sí. Yes, yes, yes. Tenía problemas. <laughs> yeah, no worries, um, pero ahora sí, ya la escuchamos. <laughs> Um, how are, how are you, um, how are you, Max? Well, uh, we are many policies in my company. For example, employees, um, should wear a uniform, uniform. always. Mm -hmm. Well, well. My company, you shouldn't oh, be late. Wow. If you do this, Bye. you receive a warning. Mm -hmm. And 
should you notify mm -hmm. your superiors. Superior, superiors if you do some something thing something wrong something wrong mm -hmm. yes you should I see another policy 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 mm -hmm. we have at my work is the use of drug mm -hmm. nobody nobody should do, do drug mm -hmm. we also have that policy in my world too you shouldn't do it okay and georgie though so if you can be so kind to finish i think so too <laughs> yes very nice there we go <laughs> Okay, guys, very nice. So here we have like part of the policies the company has. So remember, policies, son políticas, son reglas, son eh, cosas que ellos ya han establecido, right? ¿Qué son las políticas que ellos tienen? Well, uh, employees should wear a uniform always, que los, nosotros lo discutíamos in previous dates. Uh, for example, you shouldn't be late, right? ¿Qué sucede, guys? What will happen si llegan tarde en este ejemplo, in this conversation? You receive a warning. Exactly. So you receive a warning. What is a warning? Para quienes trabajan en recursos humanos, uh, a warning. Okay, no, para todos, I gotta say. So warnings son los llamados de atención, right? So, uh, hi, hi, Kevin. So, uh, warning son las amonestaciones verbales o digamos que warning en realidad es una amenaza, right? una advertencia. Pero para recursos humanos le llamamos una amonestación. O, guys, ¿cómo le llaman en su empresa? How do you call it? Acción de personal, teacher. Ok, una AP, una acción de personal, all right. Una amonestación verbal. Otro nombre con el que le conozcan, guys. Precaución. Precaución, ok. Bueno, todas, algunas empresas tienen como ya nombres específicos, les han cambiado un poquito, pero en realidad eso es una advertencia, es una, un warning. Tenemos verbal warnings, uh, como um, los llamados que nos hacen de solamente de voz, right? Y cuando ya tenemos que firmar algo que es un written warning. So, verbal o written. Um, look at this. And should you notify your superiors if you do something wrong? Yes, you should. So, como nosotros, right? Llamábamos al jefe porque nos dormíamos, porque ya era tarde. So, we notify these people. Eh, ¿Qué otra regla logran ver in this conversation? Do you see anything else? Nobody should do drugs. Exactly, nobody should do drugs, right? Eh, for example, guys, eh, una de las empresas donde yo trabajé, where I worked, eh, so al inicio, en el primer día del trabajo, like the first day of, uh, of my work, or, or the first day when I was hired, me pidieron tomarme un test de drogas. So they asked me for a drug test. Porque in my company, or in that company, I shouldn't do drugs, right? No debería de consumir. So, en vez de consumir, podemos decir do drugs. Um, because nobody was supposed to consume or do drugs. Guys, what about in your company? ¿Tienen test de drogas? Do you have drug test? Do you need to take some drug test? No. No. Oh my God, only my company was kind of toxic then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, seriously. So the first day they were like, oh no, are you serious? You know, and in another company, guys, uh, I should uh, take the polygraph. No sé por qué, guys, but I had to take the polygraph. 
So, era parte de las reglas. What about you? Do you have to take, should you take a polygraph, a polygraph test uh, in your company? No. No. No, DJ. Oh, oh my God, ¿dónde he trabajado? Then I feel like, what? This is not. In my common. company, no, because that is a liar. That is a, the, the polygraph. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, maybe, but, <laughs> you know, I had to take a drug test. I had to take a polygraph. Oh, and I had to take a pregnancy test. That this was for women. Guys, what about you? In your company, should you take, well, for women, should you take a pregnancy test? Like pregnancy test? Una prueba de embarazo to start working? A pregnancy test? No? No. Guys, he trabajado en empresas tóxicas. <laughs> Unbelievable, okay. Uh, wow, I feel like this is super crazy. Nobody else, guys. Nadie más los han hecho tomar pruebas raras. Oh. Polígrafo. Yes, a polygraph. Okay, guys, I have to tell you. Oh my God, I, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, where have I worked? Okay, in another company, I had to present my x-rays, guys. I had to present um, my chest x-ray, como el de thorax, right? Like my chest x-ray and my knee x-ray. So, los, las x-rays de mis rodillas, like my knee x-ray. What about in your company? Should you present those x-rays? Teacher. No? Teacher. <laughs> yes, tell me. The pregnancy test is uh, is against the law. Yes, that is a really good point. It is against the law, but, but I okay, I can't tell her. You are right. So it is against the law. What yeah. about the drug test, right? Is that against the law? It's similar. It's similar. Really? Yeah. So, me puedo negar. <laughs> so, are you serious? I mean, I know that the pregnancy test is against the law. Es como, it's, creo que el, um, there is another, creo que es la prueba de, de HIV. H exactly, HIV. 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 Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, que no, no, en teoría, según la constitución and everything, no deberían, right? So, HIV. Guys, para quienes primera vez que escuchan la palabra, HIV es SIDA, eh, bueno, no, es el VIH, wait, wait, la eh, SIDA, lo que llamamos SIDA se conoce como AIDS, so the AIDS test, right? It is against the law, but again, you know, no, guys, es que si les compara. <laughs> oh my God, I feel like, seriously, nobody else? ¿Nadie ha tomado test raros para trabajar? ¿Le tu work in a company? Only eight test, teacher. Only eight test. But as Kevin said, well, es en contra de la ley, but anyways, right? There is nothing we can do. I think about that. Um, anybody else? So, yeah. um, uh -huh. yes, Mauricio. Eh, oh, Mauricio, eh, what about in eh, the in, in this Korean company? Eh, my company not correct because uh, it's a discrimination. Oh, so you see respect, and so they respect yeah. the discrimination laws and everything. Okay, guys. Eh, so, uh -huh. Perdón, perdón. No, 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 tell me, tell me. Ni, ni tampoco se les hace. Eh, las pruebas de embarazo a las personas que han oh. recién contratado. Ok, ok. Interesting. I mean, así debería ser. <laughs> It should be that way. But for example, I heard that in Pollo Campero, if you want to work in Pollo Campero, um, 
I am not sure, guys. Probablemente alguno haya escuchado or I don't know if you know about it, but you should pass like a physical evaluation. Have you heard about it? ¿Han escuchado de eso? No, nobody has. No he escuchado. Guys, ¿no han, ¿no han escuchado cosas raras about other companies? I am not sure, but somebody told me that if you work for oil competitor, like they check your body. They ask you uh, like to go to a doctor. Uh, they undress you and like they make a sort of physical evaluation. So I don't know if that is for real. Guys, what about in your previous company? ¿Qué es algo que deberíamos hacer si queremos trabajar en esos lugares? If we want to work in those places. Only company salvo de arena. Make uh, as as. Uh, the physical evaluation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I heard, but I'm not sure. So I was like, really, you know. So I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. But that can be. That can happen. Oh, that can definitely, you know, happen. No, guys. But oh my God, you are so lucky, guys. Tiene mucha suerte de no presentar cosas raras. <laughs> Not with exams, not with evaluations, but in some companies they have to. For example, uh, some years ago, I was applying to work in an American company, an American school in USA. And one of the tests era que I should, uh, I should drive or I should have a car and I should have a license. So era la, de las reglas, you know, basic requirements in a company. So uh, I think that was it. What about you guys? No han escuchado de cosas raras? You haven't heard about it? Lo vamos a poner a investigar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have worked. Probably he trabajado por muchos lugares. So some companies have been really toxic. <laughs> okay. So here, tenemos parte de las políticas, right? Like the uniform, the warnings, the drug test or nobody should do drugs, right? Porque son políticas, those are kind of some policies in some companies. For example, guys, in some companies, um, no es permitido los tatuajes, right? So you shouldn't have tattoos if you want to work in the company. Or si tiene piercings, you should remove your piercings. Um, ¿Qué más han escuchado? Creo que alguien mencionó la I, vez anterior. I yes. have a, I have a experience. Ah, okay, tell us, what is your any, experience? Any, any company. Okay. Uh, I don't say no, the name. No, the no name it's big, okay. But uh, when I go interview, mm -hmm. uh, pass a, a own little room. Okay. Uh, me hicieron quitarme la ropa para ver si tenía tatuaje. Ah, so that was a physical sí. evaluation. Ya. Yeah. Eh, oh, ok. Eh, me dejaron ahí en paños, man, paños menores. In underwear. Ya. Yeah. Eh, oh. Es vergonzoso. It's super embarrassing. Sí. Yes. Yeah. But did you work? ¿Trabajó en esa empresa? Did you work in that company? Thank you, uh, God. No. Okay. Yes, yeah. I I definitely get it. It is really embarrassing. Yeah. Okay. And th was that a Salvadorian company? Yeah. Oh, okay. Salvadorian. Yeah. Y, so... y, lo, y, lo más, y lo más crítico que, que no me... Gracias a Dios no ingresé ahí porque era uno una cuna de amigos que habían ahí adentro, qué cosa serie. Oh, ok. Well, you know, so todo pasa por una razón, right? Sí. Everything is meant to be. So, yeah. So, es que se había escuchado about the physical evaluation, pero en el sentido de, like, 
um, especially for food industry, para quienes trabajan como en el área de comida, you know, en el área alimenticia, but I was not sure. So lo que usted menciona, yeah, probably um, it's kind of related. Oh, interesting. Okay. So in my, in my case, yes. in my case, even with my boss, I went to get uh, some tattoos. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tattoos. Are you serious? Yep. I have never seen your face. So that's why I'm like, what? <laughs> no, <laughs> not in my face. Name my face, but I, I, I. Are want... they visible? I, I, yeah, yeah. I have tattoos in my arms. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I want other tattoo in, in my neck. Oh, and is your company good with that? Is your company yeah. okay? All right. Yeah, I mean, es que creo que ahora es more flexible, guys. I don't know what you think about it. But probably five, 10 years ago, like Salvadorian companies were super, super close, you know, and there was a lot of discrimination with this topic, I think. So yeah, like you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have piercings, you shouldn't, oh, para quienes regresan al país, you shouldn't be a wetback, um, or you shouldn't, there were like a lot of restrictions. But I'm super glad, Kevin, that in your case, incluso su jefe, you know, is super in front of those things. Um, and hopefully, you know, it gets very open. So in one of the companies I worked before, for example, una de las reglas era, oh, you shouldn't have tattoos. And if we had tattoos, deberíamos de cubrirlos. We should cover them, so, you know. But anyways, that is part of the, of the work we have. So take a look here really quick. Um, utilizamos should guys exactamente para esto, para hablar de recomendaciones, um, advice, or recommendations que es exactamente lo mismo. Uh, como lo utilizamos, super easy, no vamos a complicarnos mucho with this thing. Si le quiero decir a alguien tú deberías, I'm gonna use you should. You should wear a helmet inside the factory. She should be on time every day. Or, si lo quiero hacer negativo, solo le agrego should not. You shouldn't wear a helmet. You shouldn't be on time. You shouldn't be late. Y utilizo exactamente lo mismo para todos los pronombres. No importa tercera persona, no importa si es plural o singular, I'm going to use exactly the same. ¿Qué es lo más interesante? Should es un modal auxiliary verb. Por lo tanto, Los verbos no se van a cambiar. If you take a look, we say you should wear, she should be. No lleva S, no utilizamos, no los utilizamos en pasados, eh, para eso usamos algo diferente, but pretty much esa es la idea de sure. Solamente recomendaciones, dice acá strong advice, pero en realidad no es strong, simplemente es una recomendación. No es fuerte, you know, no es algo que usted debe de hacerlo. No, it's not a rule, solo es algo que debería porque es lo que yo pienso, mi recomendación o mi punto de vista personal. Take a look at the following exercises we have right here. Oh, ya lo vamos a hacer, give me a moment. I have some examples for you. Let me just go back here. Uh, okay, for example, take a look here. Uh, it says, um, this is Mark, and uh, he has a stomach pain. So, si yo le quiero dar recomendaciones, solamente le voy a dar que should or shouldn't. Y esto es todo. Uh, for example, if he has a stomach pain, what do you think I sh he should do? So, he should eat some candy or he shouldn't eat some candy? What do you think? Shouldn't eat he shouldn't, right? So he shouldn't need more candy because it's going to get worse. What about the other one? Uh, number two, he take medicine. He should or he shouldn't? He should. He should take some medicine. La L no la pronunciamos, solamente suena como should. Should, shouldn't. Y eso es todo. La L casi no suena. So he should take some medicine. And what about the doctor? Do you think it's a good idea to visit the doctor? 
he should. He should, exactly. He should visit the doctor, right? It's a really good idea to do so. Okay. What about the following scenario? I have it uh, right here. Wait a second. Okay. Oh my God. Um, no, I think I confused it. So, uh, guys, vamos a escucharlo. We're going to listen to this a moment. Give me one sec. Just a second. I have prepared a little thing here. Give me a moment. Okay, guys, I'm going to share with you a little exercise. This is listening. Si lo tienen con subtitles, please quiten la subtitle. Eliminate subtitle just a moment. Eh, déjenme ver si lo puedo compartir en WhatsApp too. Veamos si podemos escucharlo, guys. Eh, I shared a link here. And uh, this was related to, this is a little conversation between um, Mende and Tony. They are giving recommendations. And... Uh, let me give it a try. So, mientras se los comparto in, in the WhatsApp group, guys, eh, please click on it, click on the link, listen to it. Está bien cortito. It's like one minute 20. Eh, escuchémoslo, guys, sin subtítulos. Don't play subtitles, please. Uh, quítenle um, velocidad normal, please. Intenten no escucharlo más lento or anything, but just normal speed. I'll give you like two minutes para que lo escuchen and tell us please cuál es la recomendación. What is the recommendation this person gave?
Uh, guys, ¿pudieron reproducirlo? Were you able to play it? Yes. Yes. They were talking about buy a new car. Okay. They were talking about buying a new car. And what is the recommendation the boy gives? What kind should I buy? What kind of car? She buy. Okay. She is asking for some recommendations, like what kind of car she should buy. Mm -hmm. She say she need a small car. Okay, very good. And then? I think you should buy a small compact car. Really? What kind should I buy? Have you seen the new car ball models? No, I've never... So what kind what is the boy's recommendation? I think you should buy a small compact car. Really? What kind should I buy? Have you seen the new car? She buy should should buy car small. He say Camaro. A Camaro, <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't remember. I heard Camaro there. <laughs> okay, so what kind of car do you think that this girl should buy? So, ¿qué es lo que el boy le dice? What What is the boy's recommendation? She should. Uh -huh, she should. She should buy a little car. Okay, she should buy kind of a small car. Okay. Hay una palabra por ahí que, que se escucha that is You see the Corvo model. She should? You seen the New Corvo purple. model. You seen the Sorry, didn't get that. Uh, did you say like a sort of, uh, can you, can you say just, that, can you say that again, please? Can you repeat that? He asking about the price. What is the range? Okay, so what is the brand? What's the price? The marca. The brand? Mm -hmm. What's the brand? Modelo, modelo. Okay, so the type of card. All right. Actually, they say like a sort of compact car. So you should buy a compact car, I think she mentioned. Menciona marca, guys. Does the person mention a brand? I've never had. What kind should I buy? Have you seen the new car ball models? No, I've never heard of them. They are very reasonable and reliable. Why don't you test drive one? Great, I will. Thanks for your advice, Tony.
Um, so guys, did, did you get that? Have you seen the new carpool models? No, I've never heard of them. They are very reasonable and reliable. Why don't you test drive them? You talk about carpool models. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's that carpool model. And uh, so what's a carpool model? ¿Alguna vez han escuchado de carpooling? Maybe not. So, a no. carpooling, guys, is like, um, how can I say that? So, carpooling is when you have uh, like three or four people live very close. In carpooling is you drive to their houses, you pick them up, and everybody contributes to the gasoline. It's like a sort of Uber, but not Uber, because it's your co-workers, like every person who works in your company, yes, in carpooling, para que reduzca el gasto de gasolina, right? So it reduces a little bit. So carpooling can be like small cars, uh, solamente para que vayan varias personas, so for some people, Probably like some Kias, right? Some Chevrolet uh, that are super, super small. They are compact and you have four doors. So a lot of people can get in there. So eso se llama carpooling. Um, let me write it here. And you write it this way. So carpool model, they said. So cars that are compact, that are small, y que se pueden llevar a más personas, right? That is the point. Do you agree? Uh, do you agree with this recommendation? Do you think it's a good advice? Or if you recommend algo diferente, would you have, uh, I don't know, recommended something different? What kind of car do you think she should buy? She needs something to go to the gym, to go to work. She drives every day. Um, so what do you think it's a good car for her? Any recommendation? Uh, no. Sedan. Okay. What what brand or what type? Toyota. Oh, what Toyota? Okay. But it's oh oh. It, ella menciona dos características que necesita. She says something reasonable. Reasonable. Uh, I need something with a reasonable price. She said right. Reasonable is like. Con un precio no tan elevado, algo, you know, en, en, sus, um, en su budget, um, algo en su presupuesto. And she mentions in something reliable. So a reliable car es un carro que sea confiable, right? A car that you can take y que sabe que no lo va a dejar a medio camino. So I agree that a Toyota is reliable. But a Toyota, guys, ahorita, I don't know you, but creo que los precios, they are not reasonable. <laughs> Uh, what do you think? For me, Toyotas are too expensive. Creo que ahorita they are too expensive. The Hyundai teacher and Kia are some um, cheap. Like reasonable price? Algo con un precio yes. más o menos barato? So reasonable price? Yes, here are some comfortable. Also. Okay. So and, Kia and, and Hyundai, okay. Yes, in the, in the part uh, is more, uh, it's, it can, Cheaper. yes, uh, it can uh, looking for also the parts. 
Mm, okay. When the car does, the, the car broke. Mm -hmm. Like the spare parts, los repuestos, the spare parts. Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can find a lot of spare parts. Okay. So, Hyundai and Kia. Guys, any other recommendations? Something reasonable and reliable for her? No necesita algo grande, right? She doesn't need a big car. Do you think that a, a, a Honda is a good recommendation for her? The spare is uh, expensive for Honda. Okay, so spare parts are expensive, okay. Toyota, I think it's too expensive, but it's a really nice car. Uh, any other recommendation, guys? What about a Chevrolet? No, teacher, the Chevrolet's are very very um, fayoso. how do you say fayoso? oh you can say not reliable so podemos usar esa palabra que es reliable como que no es confiable right reliable. so they are not reliable, mm -hmm. reliable. okay so chevrolets are not reliable they give a lot of issues they give a lot of problems okay in the system is very complication. Okay, the system is complicated. Nice. Oh, I'm learning a lot today. <laughs> okay, only, so only only okay. Toyota uh, is reliable. Okay, only Toyota is reliable. Oh my god. But Toyota is not reasonable. That's the problem. Que el precio no es algo barato. It is not reasonable. Mm, okay. The, the, the Mitsubishi teacher is also very um, confi confiable. Reliable, reliable. Reliable. Okay, so Mitsubishi is reliable. And the price, is it reasonable? Yes, the price is reasonable. Okay, so the price can be reasonable. So reasonable is also, right? Como barato, algo no muy caro. And reliable is confiable. Algo que I can say, oh, I have a car. Y no me va a dejar tirada la vuelta, right? Pretty much that's the idea with reliable. Any other recommendation, guys? The second option is Nissan. Nissan. Ah, Nissan. Nissan, okay. What about Versa? <laughs> is that a good car? Should I? Imagine that this is me. Should I buy a Versa? Mm, no. Why not? They have problem with the the transmission. Okay, so it has problems with the gear. All right, so we call it um with the gear, right? Co co kind of la caja que le llamamos. So with the gear, interesting. I learned a lot today. <laughs> okay, very nice, guys. You're good at this. So just remember, should is para algo que debería hacer, shouldn't para lo que yo no debería de hacer. So vamos a dar un par de recomendaciones. We're going to give some recommendations, no de autos, unfortunately, but eh, <laughs> ya vamos a hacer, eh, you know, real role plays. But in the meantime, let's just move on with the following thing here. Uh, guys, have you ever or did you ever see Carta Samaria? Do you remember that? <laughs> Does anybody remember Carta Samaria, guys? Yes. I love it too. I feel so. <laughs> okay. Guys, nothing else. Nobody else. Yes, teacher. Oh, okay, excellent. Okay, what is Carta Samaria, guys? Do you remember? Can you explain to the other guys what it is, please? Uh, Maria recommended. Oh, oh, oh. The consejos. She gives recommendations, yes, that's right. Give mm -hmm. the recommendations. She gives some recommendations. Okay, so um, guys, lo que vamos a hacer es give advice, right? So give advice, que son consejos, or we can also say give recommendations. So ambas están super bien, podemos usar cualquiera. 
So we're gonna give some suggestions, some recommendations, some advice. Look at it, it says, you run an online advice column called Dear John. No se llama Carta San Maria, but it is called Dear John. Read the email asking for advice and write a reply for each. Try to give the best advice you can. Remember to use language for giving advice in your response. All right. So, esos son un poquito largos, así que vamos a hacer solo uno. We're going to do just one, right? So, you're going to select one of the situations we have here, and you are going to reply. For example, number one says, Dear John, I study at university. We have our final exams in two weeks. I'm very worried about my best friend. He's planning to cheat in the upcoming examinations. Guys, recuerda que es cheat. What's the meaning of cheat? Trampa. Exactly, so my friend is planning to cheat. Mi amigo quiere hacer trampa, right? He is planning to cheat in the next examinations. What should I do? So you're gonna give some recommendation probably to this person. Diciéndole, ah, you know, debería de ayudarlo. You should help your friend. <laughs> o debería de hablar con él. You should talk to your friend. And you know what? The best recommendation you can give for this scenario. Number two. Um, so, Hector, ayúdame a leer number two, please. Dear John. Dear John, my friends keep com complaining, complaining? Mm -hmm. that I spend too much, too much time with my boyfriend. They say I never hang out with it anymore. I don't want to lose my friend, but at the same time, I want to see my boyfriend as much as possible. Mm -hmm. What should you guess I do? Thank you so much. Exactly. So they are complaining. Guys, what is the meaning of complaining? Se recuerdan? Do you remember? My friends keep complaining. What's that? Some queja. Exactly. So, mis amigos se quejan, right? My friends keep complaining that I spend too much time with my boyfriend. So, como nos pasa, right? Uh, uno de nuestros amigos has a boyfriend, a girlfriend, y se olvida el resto. So, they are complaining about that. And situation number three. Julio, please help us read number three. No, can see very well. Mm. All right, all right. Are you in your phone? Creo que lo puede ser un poquito más grande. Here, ya no puedo. Yes, no me yes. Here. I got it. Okay. Dear John, I am having a real problem with my, my roommate. roommate. I like to keep our mm -hmm. apartment clean, mm -hmm. but my uh, roommate. roommate is very messy. Mm -hmm. She throw her clothes and stuff all over the place mm -hmm. while I am trying hard to keep the apart apartment mm -hmm. neat and Tidy. Tidy, what do you think should do? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. So guys, what is a roommate? Um, no sé si when you were studying, cuando estudiaban, tenían que alquilar, exactly, or alquilaban un apartamento, se dividían, you know. So a roommate is that, right? Una, perso una persona con quien comparten apartamento, that is super common in USA or in lugares de universitarios, right? So your roommate is a mess. The person is super messy, right? Uh, what is messy? Argentino. <laughs> not, not, uh, no de de ahora, right? We're not talking about the, the Qatar and the World Cup and all that. <laughs> what is messy? Como es ordenado. Exactly, exactly. That is the one. So, messy es lo opuesto de clean, right? Lo opuesto de tidy. Alguien bien desordenado. Guys, ustedes, ¿qué harían? She throws her clothes and stuff all over the place. Imagine you get to your, to your apartment 
Y de repente, I don't know, toallas aquí, comida tirada aquí, you know, zapatos por allá, and, and like everything is a full mess. ¿Qué harían? So the person is asking, what do you think I should do? So seleccionen una de las tres situaciones, select one of the three situations, probably en la que su amigo quiere hacer trampa o quiere copiar, right? The second one is because your friends keep on complaining. And the last one is because your roommate is super messy. Remember, ustedes son Mr. John. You're going to be Mr. John and van a intentar darle la mejor recomendación, the best recommendation you can give to this person. Uh, ¿Cómo contesto un, estos son correos? Let's say that those are emails. So, uh, vamos a contestarlo, guys, como si fueran hacia mí, right? So, uh, and we're going to get started with hi, Julie, right? So, hi, Julie. And then we can give like, I think, uh, or you can use, I believe, uh, you can use, I guess. And then we are going to use some vocabulary here to give recommendations. Que es donde utilizamos, I think you should. I believe you should, I think you should, I guess you should. So, porque es nuestra opinión, right? It is our point of view. Es nuestra recomendación, nuestro punto de vista personal. All right, guys. So, tenemos cinco minutos. Escojan uno and uh, pueden escribirlo if you feel more comfortable. So, la mejor que puedan. The best recommendation you can give out. Uh, you can give out to a person. Five minutes.
two more minutes. Are you ready, guys, or do you need more time? Right, teacher. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, guys, so tell us uh, who, the, who chose number one? Who has some recommendations uh, for the first situation? Me, teacher. Okay, perfect. So, uh, Maurice. I'm having a really hard time because uh, my friend wants to cheat. Okay. And I have no idea what to do. What's your recommendation here? You children help, help him study with time. The first. Mm -hmm. So I shouldn't help my friend. Uh -huh. Why the second... not? Okay. Why not? Why shouldn't I help my friend? Ah, uh, the second one. Mm -hmm. He shouldn't cheat. He che must be che honest to be a good professional. Okay. Yeah. But but my friend, my friend really needs to pass. So the problem is that my friend um, really needs it. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh -huh. so I'm not sure uh, what to do in that case. Uh, she, 
recommending children no cheat. Children cheat. Okay. So he he shouldn't cheat. But convince me, Mauricio. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why not? Okay, so he shouldn't cheat. No, it's good. It is not a good idea. No. No, it's okay. good. All right, guys, who else? King Mastiana la primera. Who else has some recommendations for the first? Nobody. Oh, okay, perfect, Juanjo. No, I think you should talk with him and you should show him the huge risk about it because he can lose the opportunity to continue or can lose the course and you should help him to study hard the next days. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But my friend doesn't want to. My friend doesn't want to study hard and I already talked to him. But he have to. Yes, but he doesn't, um, he is very stubborn. So he doesn't want to understand stubborn. A stubborn is like cabeza dura, right? <laughs> He's really stubborn and he doesn't want to, he doesn't understand. So I cannot convince him anymore. What do you think I should do? You should try to convince him about okay. the risk. Okay, if I'm going to do not want, mm -hmm. if he don't want to, okay. you, uh, I don't know how to say, the, lo intentaste, or did you try? Ah, you tried, at least you tried. Mm -hmm. Como al menos lo intentó, right? At least you tried. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. And also I'm going to follow Mauricio's uh, recommendation too. All right. Thank you so much. That sounds oh, very nice. Those are really good recommendations. Guys, let's go with number two. It says, my friends are complaining because I spent too much time with my boyfriend. Guys, ¿alguien tiene recomendaciones para las dos? Do you have any recommendation for two? Anybody? No. Okay, let's go to number three in that case. So number three, it says uh, my roommate is super messy. She is not neat. She is not tidy. Her clothes and everything is all over the place. Hector said in the chat. Uh, what do you think I should do? I think you should talk with him that he shouldn't be messy and he should keep and she he should help you clean. All right, okay. Guys, what do you think? What do you think I should do? Any recommendation? Like she doesn't help me, guys. She doesn't wash the dishes. She is not organized with her clothes. Um, she, if she cooks, she doesn't clean the kitchen. So it's bad. It's a really bad, um, you know, roommate. So what do you think I should do in this case? <laughs> Do you have any recommendation for me? Nothing, guys? She needs to change the roommate. Ah, you think I should change roommates? Teacher. Yes. Um I think um make a schedule for clean the room. 
Oh, I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's um, my recommendation. Okay, so I should make a schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I think it's a very nice recommendation and it can work. Okay. Guys, what else? Do you have more recommendations for me? What do you think I should do? No more recommendations, guys. Get, get him out of the room. <laughs> no, you're so bad. <laughs> so like kick him, like kick, kick him out. Como sacarlo de la, de la casa, kick him yeah. out or kick her out. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a good recommendation, you know. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I should do that. But also, um, Dinora's, I think, Dinora's recommendation was really nice. So I should make like a schedule, right? So we can organize yeah. some activities together. Hey, guys. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Definitely that can work. All right. Now let's take a look uh, at your material. Same page, number 40. En la misma la que estábamos. In here, guys, tenemos un poquito de some free uh, writing. So it says right there, you should, you should to write sentences about the policies in your workplace using the words in parentheses. ¿Qué palabras tenemos acá? Well, tenemos my schedule. ¿Cuál es la regla que tienen de su schedule, guys? My dress code. Algo relacionado con la vestimenta que ustedes usan todos los días. Attend meetings. ¿Hay alguna política sobre las reuniones? Or sleep in work hours. Deberían o no deberían hacerlo. Uh, for example, my dress code. Si hablamos de clases eh, presenciales, I should wear only formal clothes, right? And I shouldn't wear sneakers. Or I shouldn't wear some flip-flops. So what about you? ¿Cuál es la política de su empresa? What's the policy que tienen con respecto a estos temas? Your schedule, your dress code, a thanks meeting and the sleeping work hours. Guys, I'll give you like five minutes. Creería que es suficiente. I think that is more than enough para que podamos crear un par de oraciones. Um, so, for example, dress code. In my case, in inglés corporativo, so I shouldn't uh, wear um, sleeveless. Remember, vamos a intentar también utilizar vocabulario nuevo, agregar más vocabulario que ya tenemos, etc. So, a pesar que, you know, utilicen uniforme, intenten buscar o decirlo de otra forma, right? For example, I shouldn't wear sleeveless clothes or sleeveless uh, blouses. Sleeveless es como sin mangas, right? So, I shouldn't wear sleeveless blouses or uh, sneakers. So, in inglés corporativo, I am not permitted to wear sneakers. No puedo utilizar como calzado eh, deportivo, right? That is something regarding my dress code. Es con respecto a la parte de vestimenta. Now, if I'm talking about eh, meetings. So, so I should, uh, I can say, for example, I shouldn't miss meetings uh, unless Um, teníamos la vez anterior decíamos la palabra respaldo unless I have um, good reason or, a good, uh, or evidence right a good reason reason to to do so so again uh, I know that uh, 
should, no es complicado, it's not gonna cause you like a big deal to make sentences, pero guys, intentemos decir oraciones un poquito ya más elaboradas, no solamente schedule, oh, debo de llegar a tiempo. Yeah, but intentemos elaborarla un poquito más. Por ejemplo, eh, yo debería llegar al menos cinco minutos antes o debo de, you know, sino en caso que me duerma, yo debería de llamar para siempre respetar mi schedule. I don't know. Elaboremos un poquitito más. Try to elaborate it a little bit more, guys. Intentemos usar vocabulario nuevo. Cinco minutitos, guys. We got five minutes to do so. Let's work on it.
One more minute, guys. Okie dokie, guys. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at your sentences. What do you have in the first? Uh, what do you have with the schedule? Were you able to make any sentence uh, using a schedule and using should or shouldn't? What do you have with the first, guys? Schedule. Me teacher. Yes, please. Uh, I I should have a definite schedule. So the meetings are short. Oh, okay. That's actually a very nice one. Okay. Thank you for that. Guys, what else do you have? Uh, do you have anything to do with the schedule? Uh, Juanjo, what do you have in a schedule? I write other things. Oh, okay. I have, uh, yes. Like, a, I should wear a tire every time I visit a client. Oh, but that is in regards to number two, right? Like with my dress code. Yes. Oh, okay. So you should wear a tie uh, when you visit a client. Really? Do you have to wear a tie? Yes, I have just to. I don't like it, but I have to. <laughs> but anyways, we got to do it. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, so guys, in Dresco, do you have an example there? A number one picture. Okay, perfect. What do you have in number one? I should complain with my schedule every day. Ah, okay. So you should uh, comply, right? C-O-M-P-L-Y, comply or complain? Comply. Comply, okay. Como cumplir, verdad? Cumplir, uh -huh. ah, uh -huh. perfect. Okay, I should comply with my schedule. All right. No, but yeah, that's a very nice example. Hey guys, do you have another one? What about the others? Do you have any with attendant trainings or sleeping in work hours? 
Yes. Any recommendation yes. for those? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't sleep in work hour. Okay. I can sleep in my lunch time. Ah, oh, okay, very nice. So I shouldn't sleep in work uh, in working hours. Okay, sounds all right. Sounds really good. Any anybody else? I should sleep more time in my house. Okay, <laughs> and not in the company. Yes. Okay, that's a good example. Anybody else? Teacher. Yes, me. I should with jacket to my attend training. Ah, okay. Seriously. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> Do you like it? Thank you. Do you like yes. it? Do you like wearing a jacket? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. that's all right. Mm -hmm. It's no problem. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, I prefer to wear a little bit more informal, but sometimes it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. more relaxed. <laughs> yes, but we cannot do what we want. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, next, do we have another example here? With any of these scenarios? I should park my car in the signing place. Ah, okay. I should park my card. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Do you have a, a place assigned? No. Yes, my assigned place. Uh huh. So, oh, so you have a place. That's really nice. In my company, I yes, can park they where... assign, assign a number. Ah, okay. So, like your parking space has a number already. Hey, but that's yes. really nice. And I can park wherever I can, you know, <laughs> because there are not too many parking spaces. So, <laughs> yeah, if I'm lucky, I'll, I'll get one. Oh, interesting. Cool. Guys, do you have any other example? Anything else? And in dress code? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I should uh, use a uh, T-shirt, um, a color T-shirt, a seam uh, in the dye. Mm, you shouldn't, or you should? Uh, should. Mm, let yeah. me get that. So you mm. should wear a T-shirt? And um, el color asignado al día. Ah, okay, so the color, okay, got it, got it. So it has to be like to the corresponding day. The Monday oh, okay. uh, is black. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, it's um, blue. Ah, okay. Uh, when wow. they bring. But but it's a uniform, I believe, right? This. Okay, so it is a uniform. I mean, if it's a uniform, it's easier. So you don't have to be thinking, but the problem is to remember what you have to wear like every single day. Okay, guys, a very nice, really good job with this. Um, okay, guys, solamente vamos, I'm gonna like steal a couple of minutes of your time. Para que re revisemos super quick. Eh, once again, pronunciation of regular verbs, right? Because last time we didn't get a chance to practice them a lot. So we're going to try to do it today. Decíamos la vez anterior que pronunciation of eh, regular verbs eh, va a variar un poquito. It's going to vary a little bit. And cuando, especialmente cuando hablamos de pasados, so when we're talking about past tenses, uh, so, no todos se pronuncian con este singular sonido, ed, right? 
So I'm gonna split them in three groups. Oh, let me see. So I'm gonna split them like in group number one. Si ustedes se les ocurre others, eh, please help me here. So I'm gonna put them here. Okay. I'm gonna leave them there. And I'm gonna make the cured another one. Let me come up with one more. Okay, guys, so I'm going to have like these verbs split in three because uh, we checked last time, right? That there are some different pronunciation for these verbs. So, for example, los que terminan con um, the ones that go and finish. Uh, con T o con D, siempre le vamos a agregar ed, los que terminan con el sonido de sh, you know, or los que no llevan vibración, siempre les vamos a agregar t. En los que terminan con un sonido que vibra, so in that case, vamos a cambiarlo un poquito, we're going to change it a little bit, y es cuando agregamos el sonido de d, right, at the end of the sentence, so, or at the end of the verb, it's better say. So I have already uh, divided these verbs uh, in los tres uh, sonidos. I have already divided those in the three sounds, uh, so it can be a little easier. And uh, guys, I'm going to give you uh, solamente one minute. I'll give you one minute para que ustedes los practiquen. Está mucho más fácil, ya están divididos. They have already been divided. And what I want you to do is que solamente, you know, so it's very important in voz alta, guys. Remember, eh, no se me va a olvidar. Well, I just want to bring that up. Eh, recuerden que está el meme que dice el inglés de mi cabeza y el inglés cuando hablo. Es una realidad. Así que, guys, siempre que practiquen, practiquen en voz alta. Es bien importante que ustedes escuchen y sobre todo que articulen. Recordemos que ese sonido no lo tenemos. No tenemos ni el sonido de ch solito. Ni el sonido de D solito. Nosotros los, los unimos siempre. So, intentemos decirlo en voz alta. So, let me read it for you. Y luego ustedes, guys, I'll give you one minute para que intenten practicarlos, para que se escuchen e intenten que les salga el sonido. So, we have the first is planted, needed, visited, invited, deleted. Todos van con ed. Now, vamos con los sonidos de la T. The sound that go with T are missed, work, Cooked, washed, watched, looked, fixed, walked. A todos les voy a agregar. Y vamos con el último sonido que es D. D. Para que les salga más fácil. Um, la lengua, la punta de la lengua, topena a los dientes. Van a sentir que um, hace esto, de hecho. Topa el diente. Entonces, intenten forzarlo un poquito. No es que van a decir el sonido, solo suban la lengua y automáticamente el sonido sale. Traveled, opened, closed, arrived, studied, loved, played, cleaned. Más fácil, no fuercen el sonido, solo hagan que la lengua suba, toque el diente y eso es todo. Traveled, opened, 
closed, arrived, studied, loved, played, cleaned. Solo es un d, pero bien suave. All right, guys, I'll give you, les voy a dar un minutito, I'll give you one minute para que intenten practicarlos. Súper importante, voy a cerrar el micrófono para que se sientan más cómodos. And uh, um, ya están acá, right? Solo sigan. Mist. Word. Intenten sacar el sonido. Traveled. Opened. Y esos de acá que son los más fáciles. Planted. Needed. Visited. Invited. Deleted. Esos sí van con ed. O um, recordemos que la T muchas veces se cambia por R. Por ejemplo, er, visited. Invited. En inglés americano es bien común que la T se cambie por una R, pero es lo mismo. So, un minuto, guys. I'll give you one minute. Are you ready, guys? Les, les salió el sonido? Did it work? Les costó un poquito? Uh, tell me about it. Ready. Ready? Okay. Perfect, guys, super quick, antes de irnos. Um, so, vamos a trabajar solo pasados, right? Uh, give me a sentence using miss, pero en pasado. Miss. Mm -hmm. Agregándole el t, right? Agregando el sonido de la t al final. Yeah. So, what do you miss? Or what do you miss from the past? Que extrañan, guys? What do you miss? Or what did you miss? Miss. So, uh, let's check those sounds out uh, super quick. Guys, vamos a practicar estos de acá. Eh, repito, before leaving. Miss. So, repitan conmigo. Mist. 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 Okay. Worked. 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 Nice. Worked. Worked. Okay. Cooked. Cook. Washed. 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 Okay. Watched. Watch. Watched. Okay. Looked. Looked. Fixed. 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 Walked. Walk. Walk. 
Okay, so I remember the Latisa, right? Okay, guys, very good. And to say, you say, guys, please don't really capture it. I'll take a little bit of a screenshot here. Y para mañana, guys, eh, en unos dos minutitos que tengan libre, solamente practiquen los rapiditos, so practice the, the D sound, the Ed sound, y los, eh, we're going to have them for tomorrow, all right? So that's going to be the only homework. Eh, tomen la captura, porfa. Si la pueden compartir en el grupo, that would be nice. Y los, eh, los practicamos durante la clase. Uh, guys, solamente uh, I'm going to take... A, well, no, de hecho, ya tomé asistencia. I already took attendance. Solamente déjenme confirmar si Abigail está acá. Veo a Abigail Mendoza, but me faltó... Okay. Yes, teacher. Hi, Hi, Hi teacher. Salvador. Yeah, I think I got everybody I needed. Okay. Perfect. No worries, guys. I already took attendance. So, esa es la tarea del día de mañana. That's going to be the homework for tomorrow, people. And uh, so, Mr. Well, Mauricio, si me regalo un par de minutitos, please. That would be really nice. Los demás, guys, estamos dismissed. Que descansen, so sleep well, rest a lot, and I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody. See you, see you. Good night. See Have you a good tomorrow. night. Good see night. you tomorrow. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Hi, Mauricio. Hi, teacher. <laughs> Thank you for staying. Okay, no problem. So, um, solamente estamos, estábamos pendientes, right, with the one-on-one, -on -one, and quería aprovecharlo también para, you know, practicar un poquito de pronunciation. Um, ¿qué, ¿Qué considera que le está costando o el que, con el que necesita más práctica? ¿Es pronunciation okay for you? ¿O hay algo más que quiera que revisemos? ¿Hay algún eh, tema que, que les... Sí, es el vocabulario, teacher. Eh, eh, Uy, perdón, ahí, permítame ese, un segundo, que creo que mi internet se me está cortando. Uy, usted me escucha, can you hear me? Sí, sí, claro. Sí, fuerte, perdón, claro. es que creo que mi internet está giving me issues. Ok, dígame, me decía vocabulario, right? Sí, hay mucho, mucho vocabulario, necesito. Eh, cuando yo converso con los coreanos, como es asunto de trabajo, claro. todas las palabras son conocidas y es pues bien fácil de, de hablar. Okay. Pero cuando ya es así interactuar, como socializar, okay. ya me cuesta un poquito. ¿verdad? Okay. So, cuando es trabajo, usted lo maneja súper bien porque es más técnico, más diario. Sí, es más, es más técnico. Okay. O sea, prácticamente sabemos enlazar las palabras con respecto a ciertas funciones o, o tipo de equipo. Ah, uh, ok, ok. Entonces, con, con eso no, no tengo problema en mi persona, más, más que todo. Por eso es que pues la empresa me ha dado la, esta oportunidad. Aunque okay. otras veces ya he recibido, ya he recibido clases Cursos. en el cultural, ¿verdad? Ah, okay. Pero no, pero no, no, no he terminado por cuestión siempre de trabajo. Ok, ok. Yeah. Cuando, cuando me dice que necesita eh, más vocabulario. Eh, bueno, yes, but, but. Ok, comencemos con verbos. Eh, ¿Considera que puede organizar los verbos? Eh, ¿Puede comunicarse utilizando los verbos adecuadamente? Eh... Sí, cuando recuerdo los verbos, sí. Vea, Solamente algunos... vocabulario. De... Sí, vocabulario. Con los verbos, sí, pienso que puedo manejarlo. Ok. Pero claro, necesito más práctica, ¿verdad? por supuesto. Hay que practicar claro. esto porque si no, uno no, no se queda mucho atrás. Yo puedo ir avanzando en curso, en curso, en curso y en curso. Pero si yo no practico y solo me basta las dos horas que tengo diaria aquí, mm. no es suficiente. No, no son suficientes. They are not enough. Pero, incluso pero con, los primeros con, modelos, dígame, dígame. Incluso con los compañeros de trabajo, pues, eh, eh, 
Te cha, digo yo chachalaqueamos porque no lo hablo muy bien, pero me entiende. Ah, oh, but you Entonces, try to practice. Pero mm -hmm. me corrigen también, ahí practico yo, pero... Nice. Pero eh, es el, el factor tiempo que ahí va, porque no están esperando que yo vaya transformando las oraciones y, y ellos entenderme, porque muchos de ellos ya... They communicate eh, better. Ya sé. Y okay. cuando... Mi aflicción fue cuando me mandaron a esos países asiáticos. <risa> ok, y, pero qué bonita experiencia que tuvo uh, con ellos. Definitivamente, súper sí, bonito. Eh, pero no fue... Siempre tenían un, una persona... Estaba la barrera. Me, sí, pero... Okay. Pero yo les decía que no, que no necesitaba, que lo iba a intentar, entonces... Bueno, valoraron eso, ¿verdad? Okay, ¿Para qué okay. durado seis meses ahí? Pues, mi amor. No, pero qué bueno. Vaya, vale, hagamos eh, lo siguiente. ¿Usted lee? ¿Lee? Sí, ¿Le gusta leer? Ajá, ¿le gusta leer? Sí, me gusta, me gusta. Ok. Vamos a intentar combinar eh, tres cosas de una sola vez. Vamos a intentar combinar lectura, eh, listening y vocabulario. So, lectura. le voy a compartir acá un ejercicio. I'm going to share a little exercise. Eh, son historias las historias están como un poquito largas, I have to be honest pero eh, lo bonito es que tiene listening entonces usted puede ir escuchando de una sola vez and uh, um, hay vocabulario nuevo también obviously, there is a lot of vocabulary so, y puede practicar like every single thing here So, hagamos una prueba. Let's see if it Eso works. me lo va a mandar en WhatsApp o, o... Oh, perdón, se lo compartí acá. I share it here. Eh, uh, en WhatsApp se me hace un poquito difícil porque uh -huh. no lo tengo abierto, pero déjame ver si se lo puedo enviar. Let me see if I can send it here. Eh, la historia se la acabo de compartir. I just sent it over. Eh, pero por si acaso, let me see if I can change color. Yes, ¿Cómo sí. se llama esa, ese, ese tema? Porque lo puedo buscar también. Eh, bueno, no sé ¿O son historias, breves de... historias? Son historias cortas. Mm -hmm. They are, those are short stories. Ok. So, for example, here I'm going to put just a little bit of here. Uh, and acá le pongo solamente el texto, eh, you know, eh, pero eh, en el link que le acabo de compartir, Ahí está también para que usted la escuche. Entonces Ajá. le va leyendo la historia. It's reading the story para que trabaje listening, para que trabaje pronunciación. Uh -huh. And, uh, eh, y luego tenemos pues toda la lectura, right? Va a haber okay. vocabulario nuevo, por ejemplo, quizás la palabra bald, quizás wow. la palabra even though, no sé si las conoce. Uh -huh. eh, thinning, right? Uh, probably you're gonna see like some expressions that are new entonces la idea es que la escucha la lea, eh, saque el vocabulario nuevo, right and lo que vamos a intentar hacer Mauricio estos días es lo siguiente vamos a darle ahorita solamente como el paso inicial para que usted luego en cinco minutitos que tenga de su tiempo intente ir progresando right? porque como usted menciona las dos horas no son suficientes, no van uh -huh. a ser suficientes, ni siquiera en, en clases físicas, you know, so they are uh -huh. not enough, eh, porque necesitamos práctica todos los días. Entonces, Así. lo que vamos a hacer es, you're gonna read it, lo escucha, lo lee, saca vocabulario nuevo, y luego, eh, búsquenme en WhatsApp, please, y ahí le voy a enviar el ejercicio. Let me see if it works. Eh, Mándenme un hi, porque no sé cómo aparece. No, no lo logro ver. El mío. Ah, 7844, right? No. 7844? Ajá. Uh, 3757? Ajá. Ok. Vale, ahorita le escribo entonces, okay. le voy a mandar el ejercicio. I'm going to send you this exercise. Y lo que vamos a hacer es lo siguiente. Cuando usted termina de leer, when you finish reading the story, quiero que me la resuma. En sus palabras, you know, y utilice el vocabulario nuevo que acaba de agarrar de la lectura. So try to summarize. Resúmalo yeah. en qué? 30 segundos. Eh, no más. Eh, 
puede escribirlo si le funciona o si lo puede hacer de una sola vez, mejor. So, this story was about a boy, so the boy tried to do this and that and that, y pasó esto y después esto, después esto. Mm -hmm. Y utilizando el vocabulario nuevo que agarró, right? Yeah. And that's it. So, para que de una sola vez practiquemos el vocabulario nuevo. Ok, mm -hmm. ok. Intentemos esta semana. Bye. Si usted considera que le funciona, pues ya tenemos como una técnica más, right? Que okay. podemos seguir trabajando para eh, yeah. su tiempo libre, para vacaciones, si va a tener, que las utilice también. Sí. <risa> Teacher, una okay. pregunta. Dígame. Este, mis dos hijos son bilingües. Ok. Y, pero ellos, bueno, ya, ya se graduaron de la escuela americana, ah, pero... Okay. Ellos tienen literaturas para leer así en inglés. Y yo les he agarrado así para claro. tratar de entender. Sí, claro. Para, entonces, por ejemplo, hay una literatura, eh, el hombre con cara de elefante, eh, y está en inglés, pero yo lo siento muy sencillo, comprensible, bien rápido. Mm. Y, que, y digo yo, ¿qué, qué pasa está pasando? Bueno. No, lo que sucede es que, eh, bueno, primero que hay lecturas para diferentes niveles. So, hay sí. lecturas para niveles básicos, niveles súper básicos, intermedios avanzados. Ajá. Si usted le comprende todo y lo siente sencillo, probablemente puede ser que su nivel de lectura, su comprensión lectora sea muy buena. Entonces tiene mucha variedad de vocabulario y por eso es que lo identifica. Entonces, si la lectura es buena, lo que vamos a intentar hacer es compensar lectura con our speaking, right? Uh -huh. Y por eso le combinó esto, porque bah, acá tenemos excelente. tres cosas juntas. Listening, excelente. reading, vocabulario y más el speaking, porque se va a grabar usted. You're going to record okay. it eh, y pues va a intentar poner todo junto. No, pero okay. súper bien, tómele la lectura. Lo único que quizás nos está haciendo falta entonces es la lectura, transformela en speaking. You know, para que trabajemos pronunciación Ajá. también. Sí. Word, o grávese, you know. En eh, in YouTube, usted puede escucharlo. Algo que funciona mucho con pronunciación es que usted escuche y repita lo mismo que la otra persona está diciendo. Entonces, mm -hmm. quizás solo, solo nos falta ir como un poquito más allá. Lo leyó, yeah. ahora repítalo, right? Grávese okay. leyéndolo. Y ya que tiene el, el recurso de sus hijos, que le ayuden también, you know, que lo sí. corrijan. O revise con ellos vocabulario, discútanla. Creo que nos hace falta solo el último pedacito, que es la parte de speaking, right? Ok. So, okay. intentemos hacer, veamos va. cómo nos va. Eh, y si no, pues, eh, you know, eh, pues ya tenemos su recurso también adicional. Va. Excelente. So, we can use. All right. Ya se lo, ya se lo envié. Va, que okay, ya lo recibí, ok. Cuando tenga tiempo, you know, no le va a tomar más de cinco minutos, creo. More than five minutes. All right. Excelente. Perfect. So thank gracias, you, Maurice, for your time. Gracias, gracias It's a usted. my pleasure, Bye. and I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.